Kamera <lacht> läuft. So, um, I obviously Bitte. understand that you're a director, uh, because you're already directing. So, I ask you very straight, what kind of documentaries you're doing. If you, if, you, if you would describe your making of a documentary, what, of, what kind of document you create? Uh, I do socio-political documentaries about uh, minority groups, subcultural phenomenon, and important cultural figures. Mm -hmm. But I also do fictions. I did a fiction film. Yeah, but why more documentary movies than fictional movies? It's a mix. It's a mix. I mean, the creative, to creatively document something is, um, I mean, I study journalism. I like to creatively document factual events. So the importance or um, you decide on the topic whether it will be a documentary or a fictional movie? Yeah, that's right. So, so you, there wouldn't be any possibility to, to make um, about William Boros or the word desire, um, like, you could, could you do about, uh, could you do a, um, um, a documentary about the word desire, and could you do um, a fiction movie about William Boris? Would that sure. be possible? And I think the lines between documentary and fiction are being blurred. I did, Desire Will Set You Free is a mix, because I felt my life here was a kind of a mix, and I was playing the part in the city, and I was one of the characters, and my friends were characters, and it felt very natural to be a mix. Mm. Um, queer core is kind of a thing that's, I feel like, a socio-political movement that's in the past. I mean, it still exists, there's still bands, but so only a documentary would make sense. William Burroughs, you would have to make a big commercial movie, which people did, and there's some nice ones. Um, but I was out to make a documentary, and that was my first film, so I wanted to start with documentary. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, what can you do in a documentary which you can't do in a fiction movie? Sell it as a documentary. Hmm. But what's the like the structural advantage of, of a documentary? Um, a documentary reveals uh, actual people, intense motions. People are allowed to judge for themselves. So with a fiction film, you're painting a story for the audience, for them to discover details. Uh, you're telling them how to feel. You're telling them what's happening. With a documentary, you guide them, but you're showing them the raw footage of the person talking, what they say, and allow them to draw their own conclusions. So I think it allows the audience to, um, yeah, to draw their own conclusions and to analyze the film as it's, ha as it's being played out rather than a fiction film, which is more about mood, aesthetic, um, uh, things like that. Mm. So you, um, a documentary is more objective? I mean, people can say that, but not necessarily. I mean, you can make an, ob I mean, documentaries are also pretty subjective. Mm. It just allows the audience, the viewer, to make a deeper analysis, I think, or, a, or their own analysis rather than the director's analysis. Mm. Because Often, not always. In a fiction movie, you have more the director's analysis then. Well, I mean, a fiction movie is John went to the store. John realized that there was mold on his food and that he doesn't love his wife anymore and that his son is a little fucking bastard. And John went home, shot his kid, took his wife and brought her to the supermarket, yelled her at the mold. She killed John. And then she lived happily ever after. And a documentary would be like the woman talking about her experiences about John and the, and the son and who's to blame, who's the real victim, who, what happened. You are left to draw your own conclusions rather than the director interpreting it and reenacting it for you, whether it's a real story or not. Mm -hmm. So um, <clears throat> would you connect your own, at least the documentaries, mm -hmm. um, concerning the style of, of your movies? Um, you would say it's a special, like, American, like, or queer, or daring, or even my, maybe, you know, concerning your background, you would say there's a connection between the style you're doing uh, and the, um, how you grew up? I mean, it's like everybody, of course. Like, how do you escape how you grow up? There's no way. Yeah. I mean, unless you're one of these people like Krishnamurti or one of those people that like, claim to be reborn, I don't, under, I don't know how anyone would escape how, they're grow, how they grow up. Hmm. 
Well, there are some people who uh, go to universities and say, so there I've changed the perspective I had in childhood so much that I actually, that even my parents wouldn't recognize me anymore. Uh, at least not recognizing the, the, the art I do or the approach I have in my art. Uh, but what's what Freud say? <laughs> but there's a lot of, I mean, queer, like to be queer is about making your own family. I'm not saying that you have to be tied into like your Christian conservative upbringing, but it affects you and your style, of course. So um, how would you describe that style? Is that, is it a daring, like daring style in, in a way of breaking Bre through borders? Daring, breakthrough, genius. That's the, no, no, no. I guess, and no. this is what we come next. I uh, spared that question for the opposition of geniuses and queer. I guess that's a very interesting opposition, but um, we should do that later. I just want to know first: uh, Is there a style you would describe yourself like? Born I mean, I try to be very improvisational, free. I try to like let my doc. I never want to be fixed with with what I'm doing until I'm shooting. All of my films, I just discover as I'm making them. There's not a fixed kind of treatment script beforehand. Um, even the documentaries, you know, William Burroughs' documentary came from me trying to make a documentary about um, this event that he threw in Lawrence, Kansas, called the River City Reunion. Desirable Set You Free was almost entirely improvised, and the story came from real characters and real people and like playing around. It's, there's, and um, Queer Core also, I wasn't sure. I knew it was going to be a queer, rebellious history. Was it going to be about Bruce, Bruce and G.B. Jones' relationship? Was it going to be about music? I let the story come to me because if I'm too set in an idea, I feel it loses the energy that I like to play with, this improvisational, spontaneous energy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Concerning the word energy, <clears throat> you would say your movies are, um, are about the topic, like let's say, love. Like, and if so, um, you would say there there is a, a reason why if you're talking about the, um, the exclusion of uh, some peers and groups um, um, why people get excluded from society because of their way of loving and not necessarily I don't think so is, you thought queer core was about that I think queer core is about people who love as strong as Th that strong that a lot of people in normative societies, norm core societies, couldn't couldn't handle this kind of understanding of freedom. Freedom, but not necessarily love. Isn't like isn't that very intertwined? Uh, maybe. And isn't that was queer uh, queerness is mostly or with a, at least capital G uh, Q um, is trying to claim that. Um, I am um, that my freedom um, guaranteed by the society has to um, show me no borders at least um, concerning the way I love so I am guaranteed through democratic societies that I have <laughs> a free <laughs> you're losing your train of thought now Lars <laughs> what's your question? my question is uh, why a lot of people in societies uh, what society soever think sexuality and love are dangerous? I don't know if they think love is dangerous. I think they think sex, sex and sexuality is dangerous. Yeah. So love is not dangerous. They perpetuate love as, an, as a phenomenon idea, but those are two very different things. Sex and sexuality, they often try to repress. That's true. Yeah, and so why do you think is that? That they try to repress sex and sexuality? Yeah. Why because is it's a threat to power structures. If people are, if people are out there, you know, if, if people are also led by their animalistic sexual instincts, mm -hmm. so our moral Christian society will, or religious society will come crumbling down, which is great, if only. Hmm. So what? Um, yeah. How do you think? If, if like, let's say, queerness is an answer to this threat yeah. to power structures. Um, how can we make this threat permanent? I don't think it's about being permanent. Like the whole idea of permanence is it'll be destroyed. As soon as something becomes permanent, it becomes invalid and not, and not powerful, it loses its power structure. So I think like the idea of something being permanent, you know, like the great movements of the last few years, Black Lives Matter, Occupy Wall Street, I mean, they're not, per that was such people's criticisms of them, but they were great. I mean, Black Lives Matter is still going on, but like Occupy Wall Street, for example, like, 
it's, well, it wasn't permanent, and that's okay. Like, I think the idea of, que I mean, queers maybe are not going to be so relevant in 10 years, and that's okay. I think they still are, and I think queer people are very important in doing great art and politics, but once they're embraced by society, maybe it won't be so relevant or important. Once we're in a post-queer world, queer theory is not going to be interesting. Once we're in a post-queer world, gay rights are not going to be so important. You know, all these people <coughs> fighting for gay rights and fighting for queer rights are not going to have a job once we're in a post-queer world. They need that. They need that, the, uh, uh, the homophobia. They need the, the heterosexism to have their jobs to be able to do what they do. It's just mm -hmm. like an, an artist, in a lot of ways, is often inspired by oppression. And as soon as that oppression lifts, what it was they're more to make art about. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of the art, such great art gets watered down as people get older and, and don't struggle. I mean, I'm thinking about a Berlin photographer who I really like, who um, who used to do people of like holding their dicks out in airplanes or like paying trees, these great images, and now is doing like pictures of, I don't know, pieces of plastic? I don't know what they are. Mm -hmm. And people love it and buy it for millions of bucks, but because he lived off the success of when he was a transgressive artist. Um, so yeah, I think like... So we need suppression. <clears throat> I don't know if we need it, but that's why things are not permanent, mm -hmm. because uh, it's, yeah, yeah. But I, but I, <clears throat> I always thought that in, in queer art, action movements, um, the method is always uh, like DIY, do-yourself um, methods. So that's why I thought it wouldn't be permanent. I, wouldn't, I didn't understand it as a, an already political act to, to claim that it only uh, will be permanent. You know, I always thought, okay, the method is, and that's why it's not permanent, because it's, the method is DIY. Um, but I didn't Do thought... It, doing it yourself and permanence, don't, I, don't, I don't understand that. No? I thought that's the, the connection perfectly, because, because you do it yourself, yeah. because you don't use any already um, established authorities or uh, institutions, mm -hmm. um, because this is why um, it won't be permanent. But do-it-yourself is about subverting power systems and power structures. It's different. Do-it-yourself is about saying, I'm not going to do things the way that they're telling me to do things, in the order they're telling me to, with the people that say that they're experts on the subject. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it myself. That way I'm learning it, I'm in full control of it, and I cut through the bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. So it's a little, you know. But isn't it a bit like at least the, the, the understanding of, I call it dilettantism. I don't know what's the better word. Better for, right. Like the opposite of being a genius. So using that, this kind of, you know, if, if yeah, something like um, the opposite of uh, understanding yourself as an expert or understanding yourself as someone who is a genius, you know, mm -hmm. this is always already, um, the results of a lot of power structures. Sure, of course, that's the whole point. That's why like, I would always opt to be an artist rather than a philosopher or something. Like you called me on the phone and you said, I'm going to ask you, I said, I don't know if I'm the right person, maybe you should talk to a philosopher. And you said, it's okay. And right now, backstory, my house is full of people because every queer that's always coming through Berlin that's from the States calls me up and asks to stay at my place. And I always say yes, so right now I have three different people that don't know each other all crashing in my house. So I'm on the phone with you and I put you on speakerphone because I never would think it was funny. And you said, you said, oh, I'm going to ask you easy questions like, why do people love? <laughs> and everybody is like <laughs> trying to hold in their laughter. But you know, I'm not, the, the reason that I'm not, a, I'm not a philosopher and I'm an artist is because I express myself through work yeah. rather than uh, through my, through, uh, I guess, visual, uh, verbal explain or, or uh, 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 written explanations. Mm. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't uh, write a manifesto of queerness, or Maybe. you, but only as an art. But isn't it a zine uh, or a zine, um, something like a manifesto, written down uh, belief book already? No, it doesn't have to be. It's just like a journal, like yeah. you share. But it, it wouldn't like zines wouldn't. Uh, if they were a bit like, if they weren't a bit like manifestos, then uh, people wouldn't, and the the content wouldn't spread as it did in in the case of JDs, didn't it? Like it was already a very JDs was a man. They had a manifesto in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, But that was a very purposeful thing. I don't think that's what all zines were doing. And yeah. I think if you, as an artist, to try 
decide to write a manifesto, it's different than mm. committing your life to being an academic mm -hmm. where you're trying to be factual and objective and mm -hmm. reiterate facts and gather information and then write it out. So um, Bruce LeBruce never took himself so serious as no. most academics did? I don't take myself seriously either. Okay. <clears throat> so, hmm, I understand. Um, the question for me is in a way of um, why doesn't it work for more people? Like, um, why does still people are, although you um, present in, in your very, very beautiful movies, your art approachable, so, and the methods and, uh, and, and the music and yeah. the actions, the performances, everything is approachable and not complicated to make, actually. But why are so many people still don't get it? Why don't people don't get my work? No, not the not the work, but the the action you're um, defending there. The, the action, and you're not defending it. Actually, you're you're progressing, um, and you 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 tell people actually why why don't you join us in a way? Mm -hmm. um, so why mm, a lot of like uh, post Prussian German square people don't join? Gotta ask them. Hmm. But you're here for a long time already, in a way, in Germany. So, what is your experiences about um, the so-called established square society? I don't believe any kind of like established society exists. I think it's all social constructs that people believe. But maybe there's. But there is a, there, there is a conservative, more conservative side of uh, living in Germany than your lifestyle as far as I know. Of course, it doesn't have anything to do with Germany. It's everywhere. And there's, I mean, but there's, I don't believe in these kind of like, there aren't such formal structures as people think. Like yeah. there's freaky accountants, you know what I mean? There's accountants who are much more freaky than a lot of gay people that I know, you know? Yeah. This is what your movie is about a bit as well, that's true. That there is a, even in, um, in straight punk ways that there is a very conservative perspective on, on, on gay people. So that's, uh, of course. And I never, I never thought about that. So it's... Uh, yeah, gay people in Berlin are some of the most racist people I know. Like, yeah. And very, very... And subtly, uh, where they don't realize it. Yeah. And uh, how do you call this? When, when you respond to hierarchy positively always? If you, if, you tell, if you always know who's what and which position is in a room, like if someone is coming and you always say, like people always mm -hmm. try to, to establish, uh, establish the already existing hierarchies mm -hmm. in the in the room, so they would actually never really questioning the the already existing hierarchy. That's just uh, I mean that's the status quo. So people, yeah, and that happens all the time. So we are not on a on the gate of a post queer situation. So we need we still need. Uh, But the queer agenda is a threat to most gay people. Yeah. To the typical gay middle class man, the queer queers are as big of a threat as they are to Brandon middle people in Middle Brandenburg. Yeah. It's a radical agenda to subvert those paradigms which have already been set up. The heterosexual lifestyle or the gay lifestyle. The gay lifestyle is just trying to work parallel to the heterosexual lifestyle to to work with it rather than trying to circumvent it and create a uh, a, a, a queer existence. Mm -hmm. Have you been to Brandenburg? Yeah. And uh, concerning your recent movie, uh, Queer Core, How to Punk a Revolution, mm -hmm. is that um, a nostalgic movie about the history of queer people in uh, like Northern America? Or is it more um, a hint to the viewer to try their own thing? I mean, queer core, how to punk revolution. I'm trying to define the word queer, more than, as well as tell the story of of the social of the of the movement of queer core. I'm trying to redefine the word queer. I'm trying to instigate and propagate queer core, and I'm trying to bring about yet yeah, social change within the gay community and the straight community alike.